Kansas Wesleyan University in Salina, Kansas is approaching 150 years of preparing a host of students for life, the future, and their chosen careers. Students come from across Kansas and the nation, bringing various backgrounds, traditions, and views that enrich each other and the world they will enter. From the beginning, Kansas Wesleyan has integrated different upbringings, beliefs, and racial and ethnic differences to form one true community. The university's success is not an accident, but rather the results of the foresight, dedication, and sacrifice of its founders and supporters. This video will share the university's history through the history of its buildings and facilities. The buildings are the system that keeps the KWU student body moving forward and are a vital part of every student's university experience. There are so many stories to tell about each building, whether it's a residence hall, pioneer hall, or a gym. Student life occurs in our buildings, and it all started in 1884 with the shared community vision of our trustees, the city of Salina, and the Methodist Church. Together, they built a university here in Salina. Travel with us back in time to that day in 1885 when KWU's first trustees stepped off the train at the Salina Depot. Anyone who ever visited KWU knows that the Kansas wind is always present. It is not a great leap of imagination to envision that wind moving through the wheat and corn fields surrounding Salina as the trustees went through the town to discover the area where they would locate the proposed university. The 1918 University Yearbook quoted from a report by the Board of Trustees Secretary, the Reverend A.N.C., concerning the trustees' trip to Salina to locate the university. The town was considerably smaller back then. In fact, the edge of Salina was just one-half mile north of the campus. Reverend C. described that day. We were met at depot with conveyances and were taken out Santa Fe to the south end of the town site and then let down a fence and crossed a potato patch and drove alongside a cornfield and out onto the prairie on half mile south of city limits, now Republic Avenue, and on the highest part of the ground we located the Kansas Wesleyan University. Over the years, the campus grew, changed, and kept up with the youthful, creative souls that sought knowledge, education, opportunities, and a future within the campus confines. The university's existence was closely tied to the Methodist Church and the city of Salina. The Methodist Church selected Salina over three other Kansas communities as the university's location, due largely to Salina's promise to donate 15 acres and $26,000 for a building. This was accomplished in great part due to Mr. A.M. Claflin's land donation, which was then subdivided and sold as individual lots to raise the $26,000. Because of the generous community support, it was easy for the church to select Salina, and the church and the city continue to support the university even today. The donated land and building funds made it possible for the Board of Trustees to move forward with the university's first structure. It was simply known as the Administration Building. It was constructed in 1886 and ready for service when the university opened for students on September 15th of that same year. Although this first building had an unpretentious name, the students knew its value to campus life. In 1926, a Salina Journal writer noted the following. Students in those early days tried to live up to the formality of that title even if banquets, basketball practice, literary societies, and commencement ceremonies were all conducted within the walls of that same structure. The administration building stood where Pioneer Hall stands today and remained in that location until 1921 when it was moved to the southwest corner of the campus. Moving the structure was a major undertaking described by John Cornett, a KWU historian and professor, in his 1936 book, 50 Years of Kansas Wesleyan University, 1886 through 1936. The removal of the first building to grace the campus of Kansas Wesleyan, now hoary with age and venerable and rich traditions, was accomplished in 1921 without the slightest injury to the structure and was considered no mean achievement of engineering skill. The project was completed at an expenditure of $40,000. The foundations of the building were split and immense timbers placed under the walls. 
The rails were laid on which steel rollers bore the heavy burden at the rate of 40 feet a day for a distance of 550 feet from the former site in a southwesterly direction, where the building was lowered upon a new foundation. It was a matter of marvel that no crevices or cracks appeared in the masonry and that even the ivy upon the brick walls was saved. On June 6, 1922, the relocated structure was rededicated and named Lockwood Hall in memory of the Reverend Dr. J. H. Lockwood, an original member of the Board of Trustees whose tenacity and profound belief in higher education helped lead to the establishment of Kansas Wesleyan. Lockwood Hall was used for liberal arts classes until the new administration building, the Hall of the Pioneers, was completed. It then housed the Division of Music and Art while the liberal arts classes moved into that new building. Lockwood Hall continued to serve the university until it was torn down in 1959. The new administration building, officially known as the Hall of the Pioneers, today's Pioneer Hall, became the campus showcase facility. It is a multifunctional building which opened in 1930 and continues to grace the campus today. Construction was started in 1922, but it took eight years to complete due to multiple delays. As John Cornett recorded, The first major delay was intentional rather than involuntary. It was later estimated that the plan of withholding construction in order to take advantage of decreasing costs of building materials meant a saving of not less than $40,000. The year 1923 saw much of the framework completed, but funds were coming in slowly, and it was the policy of the boards to go forward with construction only as actual funds in hand warranted. Then in the fall of 1924, the businessmen of Salina, growing tired, so at least it had been whispered, of seeing the enclosed shell of the building, led a campaign with a $50,000 objective in order to effect the closing of the structure which was achieved in the spring of 1925. When Pioneer Hall became KWU's flagship building, the Salina Journal noted that, The old administration building of those days, nearly half a century ago, hides its wrinkles behind the clustered trees of campus, while out in plain view of the critical world is a young, good-looking flapper of the campus, the new administration building, Pioneer Hall. One of the most beautiful college buildings, when completed, in this section of the state. In 1959, Pioneer Hall underwent an $85,000 renovation project, which added McAdams Student Center to the ground floor. That included lounge areas, meeting rooms, a game area, a TV, and a snack bar. The renovation also included adding an entrance on the south side. Currently, that addition is used by the music department, and of course, the Student Center is in a new building, the Student Activity Center. In addition to housing classrooms, Pioneer Hall is the home of the President's Office as well as other KWU offices such as the Provost, Financial Aid, Admissions, the Registrar, and Student Development. It is also the home of Sam's Chapel. Kobe McCorkle, a KWU alumnus, Class of 2019, prepared the following history on Sam's Chapel. Sam's Chapel is a two-story section of the building lined with stained glass windows that extend south. Directly behind the pillars that mark the entrance, completed in 1926 before the remainder of Pioneer Hall, the chapel was named after the parents of generous donor, Mr. Earl C. Sams. Sams said on the day of the dedication of the chapel, All life may be interpreted as a stewardship, particularly in the business world. In the use of the means, we may accumulate God must be reckoned with, not only as the source of wealth, but the only guide by which we can hope to make use of that wealth. While it was designed as a refined place for worship, Sam's Chapel currently has many uses. It is used as a concert hall for the school, a venue for the university-wide announcements and ceremonies, and an auditorium for guest speakers. Inside Sam's Chapel is the most important and meaningful piece of art on campus, painted by artist Robert Grafton, financed by patron Laura Chubb and completed in 1933. The coming of the pioneers continues the important theme of the entire hall. A tribute to those pioneers who made this all possible. The mural painted above the chapel stage besides families of pioneers and covered wagons coming to the forefront while the Native Americans of Kansas sit in the periphery. 
A clock with chimes was installed atop Pioneer Hall in 1991, thanks to generous provision from the classes of 1949, 1950, and 1951. Such wonderful support from various groups makes it possible for the university to fulfill plans and dreams, even a long-deferred vision. As a Salina Journal writer noted when the clock was installed, The clock was planned for Pioneer Hall when the building was constructed in the 1920s, but the purchase of the clock was dropped when money became tight. Previous students might consider it an oversight if we fail to acknowledge that during this same time frame, another campus clock graced King Gymnasium. This clock was well known and loved by all who had the privilege to experience its chimes. Sadly, it was destroyed in the 1987 fire that destroyed King Gymnasium. On an interesting note, the face of that clock was preserved and is now displayed in the KWU Advancement Office in Pioneer Hall. A 1995 renovation of Pioneer Hall added handicap accessibility features, basement improvements, and changes to the Student Center. The renovation was funded through a successful campaign supported by alumni and many local businesses, and another renovation took place in 2008, which moved to the Student Center and accommodated the Music Department's expansion. The Hall of the Pioneers continues to be the campus's premier building bringing the university's past and present in sync for current students, alumni, and the Salina community. That 2008 renovation also included the outside of Pioneer Hall as the building got a million-dollar facelift, removing the original parking circle and replacing it with a beautiful rock fountain and landscaping. Additionally, the original limestone columns marking the university's entry gate were relocated to the building's south side, along with the much-loved Wishing Well. In 2020, the front steps of the building were redone as well. At one point, the KWU campus extended beyond its borders into downtown Salina. Shortly after the university opened its doors, the Board of Trustees began the Kansas Wesleyan Business College in downtown Salina. It was housed in a large three-story building on the corner of Santa Fe and Walnut and included 18 classrooms. The university later determined that it would benefit the students to move the college to the campus. According to John Cornett, The objective of enlarging the academic program of the college was so that its students might be in a position to secure not only as heretofore the usual technical training for bookkeeping, stenographic, and secretarial positions, but in addition through training the basic principles of business management as well. By 1935, the university disassociated itself from the original business college, eventually incorporated as the Brown Mackey School of Business, but the business college will always be a part of KWU's story. It would be almost two decades before Lockwood Hall would share campus space with another university building. In 1904, the board approved the construction of Schuyler Hall, a woman's residence hall dedicated in honor of Dr. Aaron Schuyler, the university's second president and a beloved university founder. Construction on the hall began in 1904, and it was ready for occupancy in September of that year, although only the basement and first story were completed. Originally, it was to cost $12,000, but as Cornette explained, it was found that the heating plant had been added, sidewalks built, rooms furnished and decorated, and insurance paid. The total cost approximated $17,000. When completed, it included 50 large student rooms, a dining room with accommodation for 200, reception, and the library rooms. Skylar Hall was in the middle of the 100 block of West Claflin and was a campus home to many students over its 62 years of existence. It was torn down in 1966 to make room for Wesley Hall. Residence halls have always played a fundamental role in the university experience for residential students. Many Kansas Wesleyan alumni look back at that experience and remember the laughter and fun. For example, one female resident moving into Schuyler Hall back in 1904 remarked that, Many an amusing experiences will the first girls to occupy Schuyler Hall have to relate experiences that can never be had by those who follow us. For when most of us arrived on September 8th, only the first story above the basement was completed. 
The room were large and bare, but we went to work with a will and soon with pictures and curtains made them both cozy and homelike. Over the years, the university built multiple residence halls for students and faculty alike. Eberhardt Hall, a spacious home built in 1921, joined the campus four years later through a gift from the C.C. Eberhardt Estates. Mr. Eberhardt was an early member of the Board of Trustees and a valued supporter. The hall, located on the southeast corner of Highland and Kerwin, served as a faculty residence and center of student social interests. It was torn down in the 1960s to make room for Wilson Hall. Pfeiffer Hall, a woman's residence hall, was dedicated on February 15, 1951 and named in honor of philanthropist Annie Murner Pfeiffer, wife of Henry Pfeiffer. The Pfeiffers considered it important to support a strong, educated society. The Pfeiffer Foundation was established in 1939 after Henry's death and provided funds to liberal arts institutions across the nation, particularly those like Kansas Wesleyan with ties to the Methodist Church. The hall also accommodates the Shrywise Dining Hall, dedicated in honor of Christine Shrywise, a KWU contributor and supporter. The south end of the hall was renovated in 1963, providing 85 rooms for female students, it was renovated again in 1995 to accommodate 72 female students with a private bath between every two rooms, updated closet space, a phone line and computer, and cable TV hookups in each room. In 1957, residential housing increased with the construction of North and South Halls. North Hall, a 20-unit residential facility at the northeast corner of Santa Fe and Kerwin, provided housing for married students and other non-traditional students. It was torn down in 2021. South Hall, also constructed in 1957, located at the corner of Highland and Cloud, provided eight apartment units for faculty. It eventually served as a residential facility for non-traditional single-parent married masters and students over the age of 21. Funding for these buildings was procured in 1956 through the Federal Community Facilities Administration in the form of a $281,000 loan. The loan was expected to cover all construction costs associated with the two buildings. Wilson Hall replaced Schuyler and Eberhardt Halls in 1961. It originally served as a men's residential hall, but in recent years has been co-educational. In his book on Kansas Wesleyan history, The Time Now Past 1886-1961, Dr. Jack Warner Vanderhoof noted that Wilson Hall was so named. For Mr. Murray A. Wilson, who has shared his life and resources with Kansas Wesleyan for many years. He shall long be remembered by those of this institution and community as one who comes to mind upon a reading of Romans 12. Wilson was on the Board of Trustees and was a member of the Executive Committee during the 1940s and 50s. He helped to finance and furnish the hall along with other KWU benefactors. The 1961 Coyote Yearbook described the new facility as follows. The hall is divided into six wings consisting of two wings on each floor. There is a lounge separating these wings. The full basement is divided into two parts. One half can be partitioned off for future rooms and the other half consists of a recreational area, laundry room, and snack bar. The dorm is completely air-conditioned throughout, and each room has its own individual thermostat. KWU's next residence hall, Wesley Hall, was completed in 1969 and is used as a men's residential hall. Interestingly, the hall was simply called the New Men's Dorm until 1991 when it was officially named Wesley Hall in honor of the founders of the Methodist Church. Although the campus residence halls anchor student social life, other campus facilities are crucial to academic life. It would be four years between the construction of Schuyler Hall and any new academic facilities. Then, construction occurred as the result of a generous gift from well-known American philanthropist Andrew Carnegie. He donated a conditional gift of $25,000 to help build the science hall if the university could raise a similar amount and clear all outstanding debt. 
The cornerstone of what would become the Carnegie Science Hall was laid on November 15, 1908 at the campus's northeast corner. John Cornett penned the following description of the new building. The building that gradually took shape in the latter part of 1908 was an imposing three-story brick structure, 100 by 60 feet in extent, surmounted by an observatory dome to house the 12-inch reflecting telescope of which the Department of Astronomy was so justly proud. The new science hall was reinforced concrete and brick and fireproof throughout. On each of the first and second stories were four large recitation rooms with laboratory and apparatus rooms and teacher's offices in connection, designed to house the departments of physics, chemistry, biology, and geology. On the third floor, temporary provision was made for the library and museum. The Carnegie Science Hall was designed with a combination of Greek Revival and Renaissance Revival architecture. It continued to serve as an academic mainstay until it was torn down in 1979. Simultaneously to the building of the Science Hall, the university received a gift from the immediate past president, T.W. Roach, the gift of his personal residence, the Roach House. President Roach and his wife served as the founders of the Kansas Wesleyan Business College. He went on to serve as president of that college and later the entirety of Kansas Wesleyan. The Roaches donated the house as the president's residence and it served that purpose until it was torn down in 1966. The university then did not have a specific residence for its president until 2004 when the Kerwin House, located on Kerwin Street behind the new Nursing Education Center, became the president's residence. It continues to serve that purpose today and is also occasionally used for alumni gatherings and other university functions. One of the underlying strengths behind campus development has always been the provision of the Salina community and the Methodist Church. That support is most visible in the close proximity of the campus to the city and the beautiful structure housing the University United Methodist Church. While not a part of the physical campus, the church located at the corner of Santa Fe and Claflin serves a vital function in campus life. The church was organized in 1909, but the building itself was not completed until the 1910s. The cornerstone was laid on May 6, 1917, and John Cornett described the church in his book as, For eight years, the congregation held their worship services in the chapel of the administration building of the Wesleyan. Finally, in 1917, amidst much enthusiasm, the decision was taken to proceed with the construction of a church auditorium. The new building, when completed, was beautifully adapted to its uses both for worship and religious educational purposes. It was of modified Gothic style, owing its beauty and utility of design to the planning of Mr. William T. Schmidt of Oklahoma City and affected a cost of $65,000. The church auditorium with its beautiful interior is the center of much of the religious life and activity of the immediate university constituency, including faculty and student body. The church as the gates of the campus has been conspicuously successful in supplying an atmosphere of spiritual warmth and a wholesome social center for the hundreds of out-of-town students who have found it a place of inspiration and cheer. Physical well-being is important to campus life as well. Physical fitness has been essential to KWU students since the founding of the university. Activity was as important to the university's founders as spiritual activities, which led them to build King Gymnasium. King Jim was crucial to physical education and athletic endeavors. John Cornett recorded this in his writings, observing that the need of a building unit that would adequately care for the physical education and athletic interests of the student body was acutely felt long before its visible provision could be arranged for. For many years, the burden rested on the heart of Dean King, who more than any other was solicitous for a gymnasium building largely due to his personal efforts and those of a group of workers associated with him, the sum of $14,000 in cash and pledges was secured. There was some delay between raising these initial funds and actual construction, which began with laying the cornerstone October 2, 1915. Cornett wrote the following about the building. The building proper was 60 by 90 feet in size, with a front addition of 30 feet square. It contained a swimming pool of ample dimensions, shower and locker rooms, four office rooms, a YMCA assembly room, and a kitchen. Also, provision in the basement for a central heating plant 
to supply the needs of all buildings on the campus. Several class gifts added materially to the utility of the gymnasium. The class of 1915 contributed $1,000 for the purchase of a three-dial clock, electrically illuminated and facing respectfully east, west, and north. The class of 1916 contributed $1,000 toward the purchase of apparatus for the floor. King Jim was completed in May 1916, and six years later, on May 31, 1922, it was dedicated in honor of Dean A. H. King, a lifetime educator, university administrator, and Kansas Wesleyan supporter. The dedication program outlined the reason for this tribute. In honor of A. H. King, Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, who for nearly a score of years has wrought tirelessly, ceaselessly, for the welfare of Kansas Wesleyan University, the Board of Trustees most respectfully dedicate the University Gymnasium. From 1928 to 1979, King Jim was used for a variety of activities. Physical education classes were held in the building as well as intramural sports. The college's varsity teams used the gym for practices, and the women's basketball and volleyball teams used it for home games until 1979. The building's condition, however, deteriorated to a point where it was no longer usable and it was replaced with Muir Gym. Sadly, in February 1987, a fire destroyed this beloved campus edifice and it was torn down two months later. Construction on its replacement, the Bob D. Muir Physical Education Center, began in 1981 on the northeast corner of campus. The Carnegie Science Hall was torn down to make room for the new facility. KWU President Daniel Bratton announced the gym's construction was awarded to a Salina firm, Bob Albers Construction, with a projected cost of $725,000. The gym was named in remembrance of Bob Muir, a Salina farmer and stockman and Kansas Wesleyan supporter. A gift of $500,000 from an anonymous donor carried the stipulation that the gym be dedicated in Muir's honor. It featured four locker rooms, a fitness center, training room, and coaches' offices. The gym's seating capacity is 750. It is still in use today, but was incorporated into the Student Activity Center in 2008. An amazing detail related to funding Muir Gym was the student body's willingness to contribute through what was described as a self-imposed fee. This unique funding stream was outlined by the Salina Journal in a 1990 article. Dr. Bratton had words of praise for the Kansas Wesleyan student body who voted to raise $75,000 for the new gym through a special self-imposed fee. Some of the students giving the money will not even use the gym because it will take a year to build, said Dr. Bratton. That indicates the kind of faith our students have in the college. In addition to King and Muir gymnasiums, the campus has also enjoyed exceptional football stadiums and facilities. The Glen L. Martin Stadium was constructed in 1939 by the National Youth Administration under the Federal Works Progress Administration. In fact, university students were employed under the WPA to build the facility. The late Bill Keeler recalled in the book, What It Means to Be a Coyote, that coach Gene Johnson recruited him in 1939 to play football at Kansas Wesleyan. Coach Johnson also arranged for him and other football players to work on the stadium. As Bill recalled, Our jobs on campus that first year were mostly working on the football stadium, which was a governmental National Youth Administration work project that began in 1938. We finished up work that year and opened up the season in our brand new stadium against Sterling. Martin Stadium was named for KWU student and early aviation pioneer Glenn Martin. Martin was one of the founders of the company that, through a series of mergers, would become Lockheed Martin. In a 1940 KWU Advance article, the author observed, Sitting nearly 1,800 persons with a fine press box available for the press and broadcasting, the stadium overlooks a fine, firm turf which has held its own throughout the drubbing to which it was subjected this year. The completion of the rooms for storage space and dressing rooms below the stands is expected before the close of 1940 through 1941 school year. And when the dedication ceremonies are held next fall, the structure uh, and field should be at its peak in utility and efficiency. 
The stadium hosted Coyote football and soccer competition through 2006. In 2014, it was demolished to make room for the new Graves Family Sports Complex. The sports complex is a state-of-the-art facility named in honor of the Graves family, lifelong supporters of Kansas Wesleyan. Most significantly, their ancestor, Henry M. Mayo, was the first graduate of Kansas Wesleyan and served as a Methodist minister. William Henry Graves served on the Kansas Wesleyan Board of Trustees. Kansas Wesleyan awarded him a honorary Doctor of Public Service in 1979. Mr. Graves' son, the Honorable Bill Graves, graduated from KWU in 1976 with a Bachelor of Arts in Business Administration. While at Kansas Wesleyan, he was a member of the school football team, and as many know, he went on to be elected the 43rd governor of Kansas in 1994 and served two terms, 1995 through 2003. Additionally, William Henry Graves' daughter, Martha Graves Reese, graduated from Kansas Wesleyan in 1974. Construction of the $7.4 million Graves Family Sports Complex began January 9, 2014 with the symbolic start of demolition of Glen Martin Stadium. The project was completed in fall 2015 and the stadium officially opened on homecoming day, October 3, 2015, with the kickoff of the first football game on campus since fall 2006. Legendary coach Gene Bissell helped cut the ribbon as the new Gene Bissell Field was dedicated, and in 2014, Athletic Director Mike Herman noted the value of the new complex to KWU student-athletes beyond sports. He commented that, It will be a place where our student-athletes can learn leadership and character on quality playing fields, and where we can all begin making new memories and traditions at Kansas Wesleyan University. Historically, KWU has a strong and proud tradition that our student-athletes' academic endeavors are critical. That tradition is physically present in the number and quality of academic facilities across the campus. One such facility that took several years to secure was the Memorial Library. For almost half a century, the university's library was housed on the third floor of the Carnegie Science Hall. However, the need for a separate facility became apparent during the post-World War II increase in enrollment. The March 1948 groundbreaking ceremony for Memorial Library was remembered in the April 7, 1948 Wesleyan advance. Students, facility, and townspeople gathered on the campus of Kansas Wesleyan Wednesday morning of last week to break ground for the new Memorial Library that is being dedicated to the memory of the mean of Wesleyan and of Saline County, who were casualties of World War II. The plaque honoring and memorializing those who sacrificed their lives in World War II is located on a stairway landing on the southeast corner of the library. It is interesting to note that the Salina Journal also recorded this event, but referred to it as a sod-turning ceremony, emphasizing the fact that KWU was still on the edge of the surrounding farmland. The library's cornerstone was laid in 1948, and it was dedicated in 1949. One special memory from the library's opening was captured on camera as students moved material from Carnegie Science Hall to the library via stretchers. Today, the library remains the heart of campus learning, offering informational and recreational materials for research, instruction, and entertainment. Through it, the campus community can access over 63,000 book volumes and a large periodical collection of journals and magazines. Electronic databases give 24-7 access to thousands of other journals and articles. The library provides students with information stored in print, digital, audio, and video formats, and is also the home of the Albert Nelson Student Success Center. The mission of the center is to provide tutoring and other assistance to students to enable them to successfully complete their courses and improve their learning skills, particularly in English, writing, and math. In addition, the center offers study skills, testing, handouts, and internet resources. After Memorial Library was completed, it would be another five years before construction would be finished on another campus facility. 
The next academic structure built was the Sam's Hall of Fine Arts. It was named for university benefactor Earl C. Sam's, president of the J.C. Penney Company. Dedicated in 1953, the hall originally was home of the speech and dramatics, art and music departments, as well as the Fitzpatrick Auditorium. That auditorium is named in honor of Colonel Fred Fitzpatrick, a 1901 Kansas Wesleyan graduate who served in the Mexico border conflict of 1916 and was a 35th Infantry Division Field Artillery Commander in World War I. In May 1978, ground was broken for an art addition on the south side of the building, which was also the original home of the Salina Art Center. Peter's Science Hall was built in 1969 and 1970 next to King Jim. It was the main fixture on the southeast corner of the campus and named in honor of longtime KWU professor Dr. Frederick Conrad Peters. It is one of the university's key academic buildings and is home to chemistry, biology, physics, computer science, business, math, behavioral sciences, criminal justice, and sociology. It is also home to the university's telescope. Local historian and KWU alumna Jennifer Tolley wrote a book in 2017 on KWU history. In that book, she noted that the university relied heavily on federal funds to build the science hall, but that reliance did not stop KWU president Dr. D. Arthur Zook from proceeding with construction. Tolley wrote, Groundbreaking for the Peters Science Hall in 1967 was delayed by frozen federal funds, a problem facing other projects across the nation. Despite the interruption, President Zook remained optimistic, moving forward with the $1.5 million project. And by January 1968, the government released the federal funds. In November 1969, the university celebrated hosting an open house for the community. Recently, the university added the emergency management program and built a state-of-the-art command post in the basement of Peter's Science Hall. Additionally, the building underwent renovation in 2020 for roof repairs, an update to Lecture Room 201, and the installation of a new mural honoring the Veneer family, a local philanthropic family who has supported Kansas Wesleyan through the years. The university values the generous contributions of area supporters from Salina across Kansas and across the nation. It is that support that enables KWU to continue to build and improve campus facilities. Contributions from a variety of sources, led by the Hopley family, helped the university build the Student Activity Center. It was the university's first new building since the early 1980s, 25 years to be precise. It opened in 2005 and is a 70,000 square foot facility incorporating the 1,500 seat gym known as Maybe Arena. It also contains the brown mezzanine Muir Gym, the Backstrom Conference Room, a fitness center, locker rooms, and other important facilities. The main portion of the Student Activities Center, often called the SAC, was named in honor of John Hopley, a 1951 KWU graduate and local businessman. Funding for the SAC also came from a $1.2 million challenge grant from the Maybe Foundation. The grant hinged on the university raising $6 million for a capital campaign. President Philip Kerstetter announced at a news conference on January 17, 2006, that the university had surpassed that $6 million goal. He said, The generosity of those contributing to the project is truly a testament to the people's belief in and support of Kansas Wesleyan University. It is the tremendous outpouring of financial and other support that helps keep KWU vibrant and growing. To that end, Kansas Wesleyan received a $750,000 challenge grant from the Maybe Foundation for renovation of a doctor's office located just across Claflin from campus. That office would become the $5 million Nursing Education Center, the campaign for which generated support from the Salina Regional Health Center, $1 million, and the Jack and Donna Veneer family, $1 million. 
as well as from alumni and friends of the university, more than $500,000. Ken Oliver noted the following. This is a wonderful opportunity providing momentum for alumni and friends of KWU to join us with an investment in the future of Kansas Wesleyan University and our nursing program. We are so grateful for the opportunity to receive this grant from the Maybe Foundation and for everyone who has supported the new Nursing Education Center. Through the generosity of our current and future donors, we will be able to ensure the success of this campaign. The Nursing Education Center, located in the former medical clinic at the northwest corner of Claflin and 4th Street, south of the Kerwin House, continues the design mentalities from the Student Activity Center. Renovation on the 13,400 square foot building began in 2020, and renovations were complete for the 2021 year. The facility contains a mock-up hospital room replicating on-the-job nursing opportunities in an academic setting. But this latest facility will not be the last. Plans are already underway for new student housing and additional student parking. The campus has undergone significant renovations in 2020 and 2021 that incorporate energy-saving technology to help responsibly carry the university into the future. Despite the passage of time and the changes in our world, the Kansas wind still blows across the corn and wheat fields surrounding Salina. The vision of those first board of trustee members as they came south on Santa Fe towards what was to become Kansas Wesleyan University is still being fulfilled today.